When talking about video game enemies, people like to regale upon the fun times we had defeating the likes of Bowser, Ganondorf, and who can forget the classic video game enemy, Decoy Octopus. Everyone knows Decoy Octopus. Do you know where they might be keeping Baker? These types of bosses are iconic based on their legacy, their panache, and their ability to grow the most immaculate facial hair. Anyway, enough about these star players. Today we aren't talking about them, but the players that form a much needed offensive line. The grunts of video games. The grunt enemies are a very important part of every video game. After all, you spend the majority of your time hopping on their heads and eviscerating their entire populations. While reaching our set quotas for homicide, it's pretty important these enemies look good because well, we kinda gotta look at them a lot. I think some games have found the simplicity when it comes to their enemy design. The slippery slimes of Dragon Quest. The crackling creepers in Minecraft. And of course, the grunting Goombas that stand in Mario's path. These enemies are simple in both design and mechanics, but that doesn't mean they don't serve their purpose. The Goomba literally moves straight forward until acted upon by an outside force. However, due to the Goomba's famous grunt, we know he's looking a bit sad, and rather than giving him a genuine compliment to cheer him up, we simply learn how to jump so that we can avoid him. These simplistic enemies may be an easy way to gather materials or get some quick XP, but they aren't typically made to be overly threatening all by themselves. They're made to sell socks, plushies, and eventually uh, to make some big theme parks for big corporations to make a lot of money. Obviously not every art style can make such simplistic enemies. I mean, after all, there's a reason the clickers in The Last of Us don't look like they're coming to pillage our garden. Games with grittier, more realistic art styles have a bit more of a challenge when trying to visibly arouse the player. I mean, seriously, Konami, is this thing supposed to scare me or put a little Silent Hill in my pants? When it comes to these types of games, it becomes more difficult for designers to be consistent while still making sure that every enemy is differentiated. In a lot of games, there isn't much you can do to make the soldier holding a shotgun look different than the soldier holding a sniper rifle. I mean, you can throw one of those shell holsters on the guy with the shotgun and throw one of those little eye scopes on the guy with the sniper rifle, and that's all you got. And how can we forget the games that make a brute class just a slightly larger human being? Hmm, I wonder if that guy's gonna commit any crimes today. Games that venture farther into fiction have a bit more leeway. You got zombies, aliens, mythical creatures, robots, and sometimes when the devs are feeling really creative, they actually give us zombies, so that's pretty nice. The more sci-fi approach allows developers to have a bit more fun with creating their enemies. Look at Elden Ring. Not only do we have soldiers for us to burn, rot, and backstab, we have cute little puppies that will inevitably end in us losing a bunch of runes. We have those asshole statue goblins that will corner us in an alley and force us to empty our little over encumbered pockets. And then we have cute little snowmen. I mean, really, these guys are just these cute little guys. I don't really think they're gonna hurt us that much. From Software has practically proven themselves as the masters of enemy design. Not only do the enemies offer up the much appreciated variety in gameplay, but they also somehow fit together in the wacky finger blasting world that is the lands between. Enemies fitting into the world they inhabit is very important, of course. For instance, there's a reason a cubic jello blob feels at home in a game where the world is primarily made of cubes. Well, when it's put into a Guardians of the Galaxy game, well, it just seems kind of lazy. A little addition a lot of games add to help make their critters fit in more cohesively is by expanding upon their bountiful lore. Games may do this through bestiaries or a similar concept such as the all-knowing Pokédex. These forms of data can drop little snippets of information that completely change how we look at a certain enemy. Hypno, for instance, it's probably a Pokémon that nobody really ever puts on their team, right? Because he's just this weird guy. But it turns out this sick, disgusting freak likes to lure children into the woods and devour their dreams. What was your plan today? Along with this, ambient dialogue is a great way to characterize our enemies. A wondering grunt might say something that helps us, as the player, dig deep into their complex character. In this fashion, the work that goes into the sound an enemy makes can be a very defining trait in their design. I truly think Minecraft does a great job 
differentiating the sounds that their enemies make. Let's say you're spending your first night huddled into a cave waiting for the sun to rise. You can clearly distinguish between the hissing spider, the bone rattling skeleton, and the overtly pleasured zombie. Otherwise, I think horror games in general are renowned for having some of the best sound design, and that includes the sounds their enemies make, the necromorph shifting around the vents. Mr. X slowly stomping his thick loafers around the giant police station. And the clickers, which... Maybe the fireflies should have tried giving them a cough drop or something, I don't know. To be honest with you, zombies may be an overdone enemy type, but they still have some of the best sound design in all of gaming. I mean, when I heard a witch crying and wailing and left for dead, you already know I was tiptoeing around every corner trying to avoid her at all costs. Animation is another important aspect of enemy design. Similar to sound, animation can be used to tell the player, Hey, dumb dumb, this guy's gonna use this move, and you need to do everything you can to avoid it. Horizon Zero Dawn's enemies are giant robot dinosaurs. I feel like it's kind of hard to make that idea look stupid. Not only do these enemies look and sound better than the pet robot dinosaur I had when I was younger, the scale they possess doesn't compromise the animation quality at all. If you really slow down in combat, you can see circuitry hanging off their sides, blades whirling around, and small fuel sources swishing some kind of fluid around in there. These enemies are a real marvel to look at, and it seems Sony as a whole has stepped up their animation game tremendously. Last year, I was one of the lucky few that was actually able to play Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart at launch. And I've gotta say, the animation in this game is some of the best I've ever seen. The level of detail in this game really helps bring the enemies to life, despite most of them being robots, which are in fact not alive. Obviously. At first, I was mesmerized by all the standard animations, but then you realize you can turn your enemies into ice cubes. You can send them right back to the NES with the pixelizer, and you can create your own custom lawn ornaments with the topiary sprinkler. There are quite a few games out there that possess this whimsical charm in their animation, but Rift Apart certainly does it with the most detail. While all these factors so far definitely make for more lively enemies, they still neglect the most important factor in designing amazing grunt enemies. Their functionality. Are they merely there for me to solve a puzzle? Are they there for me to collect resources? Or are they there to just be an absolute dickhead? When it comes to combat, the functionality of these enemies becomes a lot more complex. While each enemy type will still usually have a streamlined purpose, such as kamikazing themselves towards me, or spewing their mysterious fluids around the map. The focus of combat no longer emphasizes the purpose of one enemy, but the purpose of all of them when working together. In the same vein, several games give the opposing team some type of healer or support characters. And us, as the true gamers we are, when these annoying douchebags show up, we know we just gotta shoot them right away. Despite these more direct forms of synergy, the best combat encounters not only synergize with their own playing field, but with the opposing team as well. Doom Eternal's enemies not only possess some of the best style, lore, sound, and gosh darn animation in all of gaming, but they definitely create the most kinetic encounters. You have the big fat guy who takes one blood punch to the sternum and it takes off all of his armor. The caco demon who's just a big idiot who keeps swallowing my grenades. And then there's Pinky who just takes a little hop and a smack on the butt. The encounters in Doom are like puzzle games but actually made to be fun. You have everything you need to take these enemies out and if you know what you're doing, it can be really easy. But more than likely, the fast pace of combat will catch you off guard and cause you to run low on grenades, ammo, and fuel. And this puts you at a severe disadvantage. I know most of us tend to remember the epic boss fights in our video games, and yes, those guys can be pretty rad. But, do they really deserve all the success? How would you even get to the Ender Dragon without his Ender Men? Would Bowser really be so successful without his loyal army beneath him? Without the little guys, we wouldn't have enough resources. We wouldn't be as efficient in combat, and we would end up having a good time on our adventures. I think no matter what purpose these grunt enemies serve, they deserve more respect for their time. And maybe the next time you pass by that sad, little Goomba. Rather than avoiding him, you bend down and whisper in his ear that you think he looks like the prettiest little mushroom you've seen in the whole goddamn Mushroom Kingdom.